close to us, God with us, Emmanuel. God with us, so close to us, God with us, Emmanuel. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our online service of worship for Haywood Baptist Church. I'm really glad that you've tuned in to journey with us in our act of worship. As I say every single week, it's probably getting on everybody's nerves now if you tune in regularly. But um, all are welcome, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to the good news of Jesus Christ. There may be some of you tuning in today and you felt discriminated against based on your gender, your sexuality, uh, perhaps even uh, your marital status or if you're divorced. There's all kinds of things that perhaps people stuff, suffer stigma about and discrimination. But what I want to say this morning before we do anything else is that all barriers are down. There are no outsiders to God's love, which is the ground of all our being anyway. But there is an invitation as we journey together to have a relationship with love. And that love, which is uniquely, as a, as a sort of representing this in a Christian sense, is uniquely given and represented in and through Jesus Christ, who sacrifices himself to declare our worth. He gives himself for us so that in him we can have abundance of life. So listen, sit back, relax and enjoy our time of worship together. And should you feel something within you stirring, whatever that looks like to you, make sure that you understand that God, who is good and love, may just be having a knock on your heart to say, open up a little bit more to the possibility of my love and to the vision of your value. Let's pray together before we get started. Gracious and loving God, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to gather in worship, to gather together under the banner of the love of God in Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and enliven our faith and energise our spirits so that together we might be able to see and comprehend the fullness of who Jesus is and the fullness of who we are and can be in and through that expression of sacrificial love in Jesus Christ. As we centre our minds and hearts today, be with us and bless us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go over and um, have a song of worship now before I come back to you with a reading from the Bible. Jesus 
above all names We believe He sends His Spirit on His church with gifts of heart God, His Word of truth affirming sends us to the nations now He will come again in glory Judge the living and the dead Every knee shall bow before him Then let every tongue confess Jesus, Lord of all Lord of all So this morning, our reading is going to come from Galatians, and it's only going to be a very short reading from the Bible today. And it's from Galatians, which is a book that Paul wrote to a group of believers in a place called Galatia. And I'm going to read from chapter 3, and it's only verses 23 to 29 this morning. So here's how it reads. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. This morning in the church gathering in Haywood, we're going to be baptising six people. They have decided that they want to follow the way of Jesus for themselves. And the act of baptism is a step of obedience whereby they go through this process of um, being washed or cleansed and incorporated into the new community of God's people in Christ. So I've picked a passage today that could serve for us as a short reflection about baptism and about faith too. This passage is familiar because it's often seen as like a formula that was spoken over people who got baptised in the early church, especially the bit about in Christ there is no male, female, slave or free and that kind of stuff. So let's just, um, just walk through five points really. And the five points will be law, Christ, faith, baptism and the spirit. OK, so that's how we're going to do it. So the book of Galatians, and if you've if you've been tuning into these services since we started them in COVID, you'll probably know that uh, this book is written because Paul has founded a church and uh, Paul's sort of gospel was very radical in the day. It didn't demand things like circumcision. It didn't command 
like all of the Jewish entry points for Gentiles who were non-Jews. But rather, Paul emphasised faith as being the thing that is important now in this kind of new way of Jesus in the world. And so sometimes Paul will will sort of examine the law and give us ideas and insights about the law. But I don't think Paul needs to do that. It can be really quite true what, what and how law works. For me, I think in terms of religious law, doctrine and dogma and stuff like that, what it does often is it puts fences up or boundaries around communities of people. So people identify according to cultural laws and cultural values. And unfortunately, what that can often do is those that are outside of the boundary are constituted as other and they are on the margins. And so the law, even though it might give people on the inside of it some sense of security and boundaries, ultimately what law does is it divides. And I'm speaking of religious law, not like road laws and stuff like that. Religious laws which have purity codes and what is morally good and what isn't morally good and all of that kind of stuff. And you see, for a nation like the Jews, their law was kind of did really sort of get fenced in by a lot of regulations. But all those things did, all those boundaries did, was really create division. Create a kind of them, them and us. We're in, they're out. And the law kind of does this. And even though the law, uh, the law of God, if, if you will, had a purpose in sort of teaching humanity, it was kind of ugh, inverted by... Um, power and privilege to become something that was used or weaponized against others. So the law equals boundaries and boundaries creates division. And yet for Paul, Jesus Christ comes to bring a fullness that is not available in that restricted boundary kind of way that the law imposes. In fact, the law is uh, to Paul like guards, almost like a prison guard, like we're actually in prison in a state of uh, incarceration with the law. And Christ actually comes as a release from that kind of way of thinking and that way of articulating spirituality and life. So Christ offers fullness. And therefore, the way in which Paul says this fullness comes is not by remaining incarcerated by the law and saying we cannot change our minds because this has always been the way it is. But rather, we see the contrast of fullness in Christ and we put our faith in the way of Christ. Faith puts us in the place of receiving new and free life, which Christ offers and the law cannot give. And in fact, the reason the law cannot give it is because that's a message in itself. So that when the fullness comes, we know we can look to something different because the law's always been telling us it cannot give us fullness of life. So faith comes and with it comes new life based on the fullness that Jesus offers to humanity. Now, baptism then is spoken about by Paul and baptism equals initiation what baptism is all about although it's much bigger than this this is just a kind of short reflection for us all to think about but baptism is a place of initiation we agree to be baptized and in baptist circles we have this thing called believers baptism so we don't baptize infants 
we dedicate them and and then when they come to a point of saying yes this is the way for me um they believe and choose to be baptized and that baptism act is an initiation into the new life and the fullness that jesus has brought by his life death resurrection and ascension so people are baptized into christ because christ has the keys of fullness and life for this world and in that act of being baptized therefore the spirit is given in fullness and this is for me the point of let me just grab uh, uh, grab the bible here oh my notes are going to fall out of it but this is the point isn't it now that faith has come, we're no longer subject to all these kind of dis discipline stuff and this prison guarding. Because we're all children of God through faith. And as many as are baptised into Jesus are clothed with Jesus or with Christ. And listen, this is the thing. When the Spirit is given, there is this kind of insight now that is different in Jesus, which is this. There's no longer these insider-outsider distinctions in the new community that Jesus is bringing together by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's not, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free, no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, you're blessed. Now, when we receive Christ, when we are baptised into Christ, and when the Spirit is given to us, the Spirit is given to reveal to us that now our sort of centre of being and identity transcends all the divisions that laws give us. We are a new humanity in Christ. We don't see each other by the ways of this world. Now, it's not saying, listen, that um, we deny that a Jew is a Jew and a Gentile is a Gentile. You know, an English person is an English person. Uh, uh, you know, a Russian person or a Ukraine, they've all got culture and all of that mixed in. So it's not saying that we sort of deny uh, personal identities, but rather... That what we now recognise in Christ is the deeper truth about humanity, which is we are all made in the image of God. And in loving and accepting one another by the Spirit's work, we are able to transcend what the law does in dividing people and offer something that brings celebration, community and diversity to the fore. Listen, God's, God's people, the church, is filled with very, very different individuals. And I, I'm not one to say, listen, you know, um, if you're a woman, you sort of deny you're a woman. Or if you're gay, you deny you're gay. Or lesbian, you deny you're lesbian or trans. You deny. That's not the point of this. What it's saying is all of these things are true, you know, I'm gay, it's true of me, I'm gay. That doesn't go away just because I've received Jesus and I have faith and I've been baptised. But rather, rather what happens is that we see each other as fundamentally made in the image of God and made in a very diverse and creative way. Some are made gay, some are made straight, some are made in this culture, some are created in that culture. But we celebrate diversity that, I think, is the thing. And the reason we celebrate diversity is because God is rich and colourful in diversity. And so once we are baptised and initiated into Christ and filled with the Spirit, we see one another in a joyful, wonderful way. Somebody's identity isn't a threat to my security any longer because I see the image of God in that person who's different to me and our our sort of point of unity is about the fact 
that we are loved by God and made in his image. And you know, when we start to see each other that way, it becomes very, very, very easy to affirm one another. It's very easy then to pull up some of the legalistic boundary markers that we have in life and say these are useless because in Christ it is love that fulfills law and nothing more and nothing less. So today our candidates in church will be baptised into Christ. They've received new life and fullness in him and through faith they have received that fullness. They will be baptised and in a sense clothed with Christ, washed from the old and clothed with the new. They will be initiated, even though that sounds kind of cultish, but in a mysterious way, they're incorporated into this new humanity, this new body of people in Jesus Christ. And listen, it's a body of people that love diversity <laughs> because we celebrate it as a place of true encounter with God. So today our candidates will know, once you are baptised into Christ, we see one another in our true created capacities. We do not see one another as threats if we are different, but as opportunities to grow more and more into the humanity that God has willed for this world. Listen, this morning, why don't you have a think about this too? This idea of, of coming away from legalistic boundary markers, to see in Christ fullness of life, to put your faith in that fullness of life, to consider baptism, and to understand the work of the Holy Spirit within God's people. And let me tell you, if you are watching and you've been hurt by the church because they've judged you for this, that and the other, let me say the Holy Spirit ain't in that kind of stuff. There is an encounter, an opportunity for encounter within God's people where difference doesn't equal division but difference equals fullness and celebration. This is the new creation, the new humanity, the new and living way of Jesus for this world. So listen, I know often the, the church gets bad press about this, especially when it starts talking about the LGBTQIA plus community. And I've just got to say, you know, religion trades very well in lawmaking, and division and boundaries but Christ is not religion Christ is the fullness sent from God to take us out of the prison of those things to bring us to a place of celebration in one another encounter with one another so that we can be the authentic people that we were created to be clothed with Christ and able to represent his way to the world and to one another. So let's consider today. If you have been baptised, consider whether the Spirit's work in your life is causing you to reflect and change and evolve into a more generous person with others. If not, it's time to change our minds. And if you've not considered having a, a more committed type of faith, I offer that for your consideration too today. So bless you. I thought that'd be a nice way of just explaining baptism and the way it works. And please pray for those who will be physically baptised in the church today. But also consider if this way is for you, leave us a comment, leave us a like and a message, and we'll follow up with you. Bless you all. 
and let's continue to try to live out and endeavour to live out the Spirit's work in our world that sees others as opportunities for deeper and richer encounters with God. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us uh, this morning just for that fairly short reflection on baptism. And I hope that it's kind of made sense for you. It's perhaps been a bit more teachy about the sort of 
the issue of baptism. But again, listen, I said at the start about all our welcome, that the kingdom of God is thrown open for us without judgment. There is unconditional love on offer. There is water for the thirsty if your life feels like it's a desert. And listen, Jesus is risen and he is able to come and reveal himself to you and to me so that we might have a greater sort of capacity to live out the image of God in which we are created, which is an image of fullness and life and love and celebration. Let's go out and give that into our world. Let's sow that into our communities and friendships and families. And with that, let's say to one another the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and ever more. Amen. Amen. God bless you all and I look forward to either seeing you one day physically in person if you're able to come but you're watching because you're nervous or I just look forward to being with you again next week. God bless and see you soon. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. has promised good to me, His word my hope secures, He will my shield and portion be, as long as life Chains on.